Hey guys, Andy Rafael from eTechnics.com here, and today is a big day for AMD. Working on the success of the first generation Ryzen desktop processors, today, as you can see, we have the newest second generation processors, codenamed Pinnacle Ridge. This gives us new features such as XFR2, Precision Boost 2, and Store MI technology. Said to offer up faster clock speeds, lower temperatures, and all around better performance, does it live up to the hype? There's only one way to find out. Let's jump right in. Our review kit version came with two boxes, one bigger and one smaller. The bigger box comes with a nice sleeve insert and underneath contains two motherboards featuring the new X470 chipset. Also included was 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Sniper X 3400 MHz memory. The new processors have improved memory support of speeds up to 2933 MHz, and as we know, G-Skill have great compatibility, so we shouldn't see any problems here. The smaller box is Ryzen branded, and inside there is a product card and two retail CPU boxes, one for the Ryzen 5 2600X and one for the Ryzen 7 2700X. The boxes for the CPUs are what we've come to expect from the Ryzen range of processors, and come supplied with stock air coolers. The Ryzen 5 2600X comes with the AMD Wraith Spire, while the Ryzen 7 2700X comes with the new Wraith Prism Cooler, with switchable fan profiles and multiple RGB lighting zones. In terms of external design, both of these CPUs continue the trend that we're familiar with, and look no different from any other Ryzen processor, excluding the Threadripper series of course. Keeping this design means that either CPU will work fine in any existing AM4 motherboard, as long as the BIOS has been updated. This applies to X370, B350 and A320 motherboards. If you're using the latest X470 boards, then the processors will work straight out of the box, and you will also unlock some of the other features such as XFR2 and Precision Boost 2 that require the combination of a second generation Ryzen desktop processor and any X470 based motherboard. These allow your CPU to tune itself to the operating environment. For example, boosting its clock speed automatically when the thermal environment is especially good, or when it has power to spare. You will also benefit from the Store MI technology, which will allow you to virtually combine an SSD and a mechanical drive into a single disk, giving you the benefits of both. AMD made it clear that the AM4 socket will last for a minimum of four years. As it launched in September 2016, this would imply a lifespan extending until at least 2020. With this in mind, AMD have maintained forwards and backwards compatibility with the new Pinnacle Ridge based processors, which means you'll be able to use the new second gen processors with any previous AM4 socket motherboard. Both of these CPUs are based on the new Pinnacle Ridge architecture, which utilizes the new 12 nanometer fabrication process. This means that we should be able to get faster clock speeds and lower temperatures across the board. Taking the processors one at a time, let's start by looking at the Ryzen 5 2600X. It has six cores, 12 threads. It's clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, but has a max boost speed of 4.2 gigahertz. It has a total of 16 megabytes of L3 cache and a TDP of 95 watts. It's designed to replace the Ryzen 5 1600X, which has very similar specs, but is based on the older 14 nanometer process and it only has a turbo speed of 4 GHz, along with a lower supported maximum memory speed. The Ryzen 7 2700X is designed to replace the Ryzen 7 1700X, and is clocked at 3.7 GHz with a max boost speed of 4.3. This is a massive jump from the 1700X, its first generation counterpart. Again, using the new 12 nanometer fabrication process and featuring a total of 16 megabytes of L3 cache, the 2700X has a slightly higher TDP of 105 watts, which is above that of both the Ryzen 7 1700X and the second gen Ryzen 5 2600X, which may explain why it comes bundled with a higher spec cooler. In our tests, the first step is to update the BIOS. This gives us maximum stability and overclocking potential. We used the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi, and in our tests, we managed to overclock the 2600X to 4.25 gigahertz at 1.4 volts, and the higher spec 2700X, we managed to get that to 4.2, again at 1.4 volts. When taking into account that the CPUs come with standard boost clock speeds of up to 4.2 gigahertz and 4.3 gigahertz respectively, these increases might not seem like a lot, However, it's worth keeping in mind that while the boost clock speed is increased as needed, overclocking will result in a constant higher clock speed. And in both cases, 
This was a large increase from the base clock speed of the processors. AMD claim that both of these processors are the ultimate for enthusiast gamers who are also content creators. So let's jump in and take a look at the benchmarks. software side, the upgraded version of AMD Ryzen Master includes several new ways of tracking the available power reaching the CPU socket. Along with allowing you to individually control the clock speed of each core in 25 MHz increments, it includes fastest core detection, which allows for improved overclocking functionality compared to the previous generation processors. This will pinpoint which of your CPU cores will run faster and overclock higher. This could be extremely valuable for professional overclockers, especially those operating under extreme sub-zero conditions. So guys, as you can see, these processors are both good in their own right, and when coupled with an X470 motherboard, they do overclock quite nicely and do have the potential to unlock some interesting features that will allow you to maximize their speed. Both of them boast a solid performance increase from their first generation equivalents and also fare well against the current competition from Intel. With the first generation 1600X and 1700X currently priced as low as 175 and 270 pounds respectively, and the second generation 2600X and 2700X priced as low as 193 pounds and 282 pounds, we definitely feel that an upgrade is more than worth it given the new functionality and performance on offer. Other than that guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video and it gave you a bit of an idea as to what we have on offer here today. We've got plenty of other videos based around the whole kind of architecture, chipset, motherboards and much more to come. So stay tuned for that. Until next time guys, you know what to do. See you later.